like a three-year contract. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the College of Complexes. The sound on the clock is 8 o'clock, and we're here to enjoy the festivities of the college tonight. You don't have a microphone? Brown will get the microphone in a couple of minutes ready. Now that I've met you, I'd maybe like, we can... I'd like to you perhaps. get the microphone and do it the way you're supposed to. Okay, Charlie, no problem. We have a microphone. Good. Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'll be acting as a little bit of a moderator until Brown has gone down and collected your money. <laughs> Tonight's speaker will be talking about the UN Agenda 21, and I'd like to first remind you about a couple of rules that the college has. Number one, it's one fool at a time, and number two, no personal attacks. The format of the college is as follows. We'll have a brief announcement period, our speaker will speak, then there will be a brief question and answer period, and then after that we'll have the infamous rebuttal period where you'll all get a chance to speak up. Promptly 11 o'clock, the restaurant closes down, and our speaker gets the last word. Our speaker tonight is Diane Shapiro. Uh, she will be speaking on the imposition of communitarianism uh, via the UN Agenda 21. Is it a plan to move to a world totalitarian state? Yes. And, uh, well, maybe it's somebody's plan. I don't know uh, why uh, George Herbert Walker Bush and, uh, uh, William and Bill Clinton both side, uh, signed on to it. But, well, at any rate, we will hear from uh, Susan about that. Uh, Susan is our 46th Ward. Diane. Yes. Diane. Diane. Diane Shapiro. Diane Shapiro, <laughs> right. Our uh, 46th Ward Republican uh, uh, committee woman. Person? Person. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, without further ado, she will speak. going to clarify something. For many years, I was a Democrat Party precinct captain, and I firmly believe in a robust two-party system, and I think it's really important that everybody hold each other to checks and balances, something we have not had in the city of Chicago for probably my whole life, but that's beside the point. How many of you are familiar with United Nations Agenda 21, have ever heard of it? Okay, so some of you are familiar with it. It was signed on to in 1992 at the Rio Earth Summit by then President George Herbert Walker Bush. And it was enacted in 1993 by Bill Clinton, and there's an executive order number, which I can give you in a sec. But the thing is that basically the goal of the United Nations Agenda 21 is the operative word communitarianism. Communitarianism means that the rights of the individual, your rights, are not as important as those of other people. So therefore, you're familiar with the eminent domain? Eminent domain is employed within this agenda. Actually, the origins of Agenda 21 precede 1992. They go back actually as far back as 1976 and before with the um, Habitat One. And the United Nations, in fact, you're, you're all familiar with the United Nations and Secretary General and basically, and I see that Charlie was wearing a t-shirt in honor mm -hmm. of the event, like I wore blue and gray in honor of <coughs> being here so I could play both sides. <laughs> but the, the bottom line is that Years ago, when I was in the Democratic Party, I was precinct captain in the 45th Ward up on the northwest side. And I became curious as to why they were eminent domaining or trying to eminent domain a strip of land not far from the Jefferson Park train station. And what they wanted to do was to build high rise over retail. And they started talking words like transit, village, and very interesting stuff that made me, very, that made me curious. What is with this eminent domain? And some of you, is anybody from the northwest side, that bicycle shop that's still there on Lawrence? They fought and they won 
being eminent domain. You're familiar with the concept of blighted properties and TIFs? Yes. Well, this is what they tried to do on the northwest side, and I couldn't figure out what it was about. So I started doing research, and I started reading. And the more I read, the more my eyes opened up. At that time, I learned about United Nations Agenda 21, but not directly by name. So by this man having fought and won, it, st it gave me the impetus to study a little bit more about Agenda 21. How many of you are all familiar with the concept of buying local, think globally, but act local? That's right out of United Nations Agenda 21. Agenda 21 Sustainable Development is actually what it's called. And it's not a left or right issue. It's not Democrat or Republican. It has nothing to do with political parties. We at the bottom think that we have any impact by being a Democrat or a Republican, when in fact so much of it is out of our hands and really in the hands of the United Nations and higher powers that we will never come to know. And ideally, they want to infantilize the poor, make them dependent upon government, and erode the middle class. The ultimate goal, as crazy and as frightening as it may sound, is to take our wealth of the West. This is in the agenda, and I strongly encourage you to look this up. United Nations Agenda 21, Sustainable De uh, Development from the Rio Earth Summit. They want to take us off of our land. You notice that they do things, and everybody wants to be kind to the environment. We all don't want to litter, but it's been carried to such an extreme that what they're trying to do is to take people off of rural properties and herd them eventually into city centers. They change land restrictions. Say, for example, you own a farm and you want to pass it on to your children. They may have changed those land restrictions. So therefore, you cannot sell your property to anybody other than to the government because it's not saleable. And this is where the concept of eminent domain comes in. They want to take our property. They want us to, in the name of conservation, in the name of green, in the name of sustainable, all very pretty sounding words, but does anybody here know what sustainable is? Yeah. What is sustainable? You use less than, than you were, uh, you are all pretty for the input. That's basically it. That you're, you put it to building. I mean, you don't, you don't consume energy. It is development that meets the, the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. The development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It sounds so good on the surface. All of us want to conserve the environment. All of us want to take care of our natural resources. But United Nations Agenda 21 goes several steps further to the point where they actually will demand that you and I eventually move out of our properties for one reason or another. You notice the high cost of gasoline, the high cost of electricity. This is planned. Are any of you familiar with Frederick Hayek? Yes. Who's familiar with Hayek? What's the problem with central planning? Nothing. Central planning leads to serfdom. <laughs> yes. Central planning. The road leads. to serfdom by Friedrich Hayek. Absolutely. Has oh, anybody here read the book? Yes. I want people to read these resources to see what central planning does. This is, again, not a left or a right issue. I based my, my presentation tonight on the book Behind the Green Mask mm. for simplicity's sake because there really is a tremendous amount of research out there, but it's hiding in plain sight. Now, think about this with planned development. How many of you live in condos? <laughs> what about those restrictions? Seriously, you can or cannot put something out on your balcony. You can or cannot put your garbage out at a certain time. You can't throw your garbage out between, say, seven, between 10 at night and seven in the morning. These are all things that there are means by which, there are means of control 
they really are controlled. When I live in a condo building, and I'm the first one to tell you that I've lived in condos since the 80s, and I became more and more aware of condo associations uh -huh. and the restrictions they can put on you. Now, in some towns, not mowing the lawn in co-ops has allowed the associations to cite violations and charge people <coughs> fines for not maintaining their buildings in that same standard as everybody else. There's no room for individuality. There's no room for individualism. Now, communitarianism, again, is where your rights are superseded by everything else. The community is more important. And by extension, through Agenda 21, your individualism, you are encouraged as an individual, as a global individual. You're not an individual individual. Remember, think globally, act locally. How many of you are familiar with ICLEI? I C L E I. Does anybody know what ICLEI is? Uh, no. Nope. Yeah. And um, can I? ICLEI is the International <laughs> Committee for Local Environmental Initiatives. Think about it. International to local. What they are trying to do basically is to homogenize all of us, and because we here in the West have so much, it's unfair. And I'll jump ahead a little bit. But how many of you um, think about the land that you own? How many of you own property? How many of you have tried to put improvements on your property and have been told that maybe you need a zoning variance to get something done? This is what I noticed back in 04 when I first really became acquainted with Agenda 21 through my own personal experience. It's like, how can a governmental agency rezoned zone and so forth property it, it just it confused me they made it seem so complicated a zoning you own a house you should be able to fix your house the way you want to fix your house but no through regulations they regulate you into doing things their way and if you don't do it their way they can order you to dismantle whatever you have built now if you question sustainable development, will you be questioned? Well, of course. Because uh, how many of you are familiar with the Delphi technique? Delphi. Does anybody know what Delphi is? No. Delphi. Now, I, I, I should read this to you. Delphi, basically, it was developed by the RAND Corporation. And you know what RAND stands for, right? R&D, Research and Development. It is a form of brainwashing. People come in to speak to you, and they get you to conclude that what they've come in to tell you was, was your idea in the first place. It's crazy. But this is what they do. And I noticed that here in the 46th Ward. How many of you live in the 46th Ward or anywhere near here? I'm going to jump a little bit from the 45th Ward with the transit villages that they wanted to build by the railroad tracks and that stack them and pack them kind of construction, retail at the bottom and residential over it. Here in the 46th Ward, are you familiar with, with the Target over on Broadway? Mm -hmm. yes. Residential over retail? The only people that, are made, that made money out of that were the developers. They were charged $400,000 $400, per unit to build those, those housing units that they were renting for a pittance per month, all subsidized by TIFs. What are TIFs? Tax Increment Financing Districts. Tax Increment Financing Districts. How does a district become a TIF? Well, part of it is determined by a neighborhood being, quote, blighted. And then they halt property taxes at a certain level for up to 23 years, and that money goes into a general fund that nobody knows was what, what is in it. But somehow, some way, they build the jewel in the 45th Ward with TIF funds. They build the Target with the residential over, re the retail with residential over it in the 46th Ward. And who has any say in it? The politicians. They try to do that over in the 47th or 48th Ward, just west of here on Lawrence. These are all things which emanate from United Nations Agenda 21. 
I'm going to give you the number, hold on a sec, of the, uh, I, I printed this out and I meant to make the print a little bit bigger and capitalize, but you're familiar with the concept of smart, smart growth, smart, smart. How many of you have heard the word smart? Smart phones, smart meters, smart this, smart that. That's all out of Agenda 21 as well. We are being lied to. We are being told one thing. We're being baited and switched. Smart growth, sustainable growth, all sorts of things like that that really have nothing to do with, with our part of the world. They want to take our resources from us and redistribute them around the world. When Agenda 21, I, I, what's his name? Um, Maurice, uh, I'm blacking on his last name. He's a Canadian fellow, he lives in China now. He was based, Maurice Strong, Maurice Strong. How many of you are familiar with the name Maurice Strong? I want you to research Maurice Strong. I want you to look up Habitat One. I want you to look up United Nations Agenda 21. I want you to look up... Hold on one sec, let me just find the... Um, Habitat One, 1976, and there was a 1983 UN meeting as well. The United Nations is not that the United Nations of 1946. And in fact, you have to go back to the League of Nations under Woodrow Wilson, who went down on the record as being a wonderful president, and I strongly urge you to really do the research about Woodrow Wilson to find out what a truly evil man he was. And read about the institution of the Federal Bank, which is neither federal nor has anything to do with our government. But when our U.S. Treasury wants to print money, they have to borrow it. And this was all Woodrow Wilson, and thank you for the income tax as well, sir. Um, okay, I just want to find the number of the executive order. Um, but while, I, while I'm trying to find the number of the executive order, what is it? Do any of you know what an NGO is, non-governmental organization? What is an NGO, anybody? They're actually governmental organizations. What is it? They claim to be non-governmental organizations. You got it. They're actually governmental organizations. They hold a tremendous amount of influence over governmental organizations. And organizations like ICLE, ICLE is international. There are 600 member cities, as I understand it right now, who belong to ICLE. Does anybody know that Chicago is a member of ICLE? International Council for Environment, uh, Local Initiatives, Local Environmental Initiatives. We are a member. They, Florida and a number of other cities have done what they could. They have gotten out of ICLE, gotten out of its arrangement with ICLE, because a lot of the restrictions placed by ICLE actually are counterproductive to communities. Uh, I'm just trying to find the executive order number. Does that help with the light? Oh, it's not the light. It's unfortunately the way my printer typed everything out. I don't like to work with too many notes. But I, I've written down these executive orders that I want you folks to look up because I don't expect you to believe a word that I say. I want you to be doubters. I want you to be skeptics. I was a skeptic. 2004, if someone said to me, United Nations, Agenda 21, the goal of the United Nations to basically take down the whole of the West and redistribute our wealth, pack us into city centers in high-rise buildings over retail, price gasoline and cars out of our affordability, and the only transportation available to us will be public or bicycles, and, the pro and prohibiting the ownership of private property, I would have been horrified. But then I started looking, I taught college for 11 years, and through my, uh, my when I go and I'm, with another subject, I go into the high schools because I'm director of safety and education for ABATE, which is a motorcycle rights organization. So I go in the high schools and I do the presentations and I see the books they're teaching from. 
And they're literally training these kids to not want private property. Mm. That this, like the story of stuff. I believe that there has to be a balance between socialism and capitalism, that both can cooperate equally, and there, there's a need for both. No, sir. But when you can only have an, a basically communistic United Nations trying to level us out around the world because they believe that we have too much, I think that's quite frightening. It's Orwellian. Now, Rosa Corey wrote this book, Behind the Green Mask, which is available at Amazon.com for $17. There's a lot of information in it. I'm trying to get a group of people together to see if there's a way that we can get Chicago out of Ickley. It's not because I'm anti-ecology. It's not because I'm anti-anything. I just think that it's too much of an imposition of other people's beliefs upon us. And the freedom of the individual, as in central planning, is taken away. Your individual rights and freedoms, through executive order by Republican Democratic presidents, is being taken away from you. Now, I was, I was mentioned uh, the United Nations, I mentioned the transit villages. Do you all do you know what, tra what transit villages are? Are you familiar with HARP? Yes. H A A R P. Uh -huh. Are you familiar? Okay. HARP, right now, they are inventorying through the United Nations Agenda 21, David Rockefeller, names that you'll know. They are inventorying all of the humans and animals on this planet with Google. Seriously. There's a, an, a I think it's like a 15 minute video on YouTube that's called HARP Agenda 21. And HARP, Agenda 21, Google, and the Sinister DNA Plan. It's there, it's out there. How many of you are familiar with Operation Paperclip? What was Operation Paperclip? Operation Paperclip was a, one of those the mechanisms by which they make things appear and disappear through the through the shield. HARP is Tesla. That Operation Paperclip had to do with, with Tesla. But that's a different subject. But what they are doing now is mapping the how many you see all these new species they're learning about? Mm -hmm. How are they finding all these species? How do they know that elephants in Africa are depleting? They are categorizing them. And I know it sounds awful and I know it sounds sinister, but I think it's really important that people be aware and be able to do the research on this and I want to give you the mechanism by which to do it. Um, are you familiar with Kilo, the, the Kilo decision? Because I had mentioned taking away a person's private property. Basically, I'm in it domaining it. In, in this decision in Connecticut, the Kilo family was basically told that they could not have their property because they wanted to do high-rise building on it, and the property was therefore taken away from them. K-E-L-O, you can look that up on the internet. Um, Okay, the President's Council on Sustainable Development, Bill Clinton, in 19, 1993, was Executive Order 12852. It was called the, the President's Council on Sustainable Development. And basically, they, they, they call it now Sustainable America, but it really doesn't allow for dissent. They wanted by 2002 to have that agenda in place in the schools, and it is right now, in uh, the cities across the United States. You could hear it called a central planning, planning association. When you want to build on your property, you have to go to the planning board, and they will tell you if you may or may not make alterations to your property. And it all begins with Agenda 21. And Marie Strong is um, Canadian, he became very wealthy through the oil field. He, he describes himself as thinking like a socialist and behaving like a capitalist. And he's made tremendous amounts of money. He is one of the huge powers behind the enactment of Agenda 21 and getting George Bush to sign on to it at Rio. Now, are you familiar with the rural councils, White House rural councils? 
How many have heard of White House Rural Councils? It was signed by Barack Obama, it was created by Barack Obama's Executive Order 13575. Well, probably we're all paying too much attention to Anthony Weiner's Weiner, because this is when they pass White House Rural Councils. Are you familiar with down in Texas, they're, they're not allowing the rice farmers to have water, because you know you need a lot of water for rice paddies and they're using the excuse that there's a drought? The problem is that what they're trying to do with the whole Agenda 21 situation is, and you'll notice like I did in the schools, there, there are large corporations sponsoring the programs in the schools. They're purchasing up the smaller ones, like Monsanto is one that comes to mind. With the, I, I, you're all familiar with Monsanto, right? Mm -hmm. What they really are trying to do is to push everybody off the land. They want us to be dependent on larger, higher powers. Rather than, even though they're talking about buying locally, they're making legislation making it, that it's almost impossible for someone to actually grow locally. I want you to ask me questions. I want to give you resources. As I said, I don't want you to believe a single word I say because what I'm saying sounds pretty darn crazy. What I'm saying sounds pretty darn incredible. But I'll paraphrase Rosa Corey. Says this is not conspiracy theory, this is conspiracy fact. And anybody who questions this, they, sh they shun, they avoid, they push away. But the only way that we are going to be able to protect our own rights as individuals is to become aware of Agenda 21, to become aware of what is going on around us, hiding in plain sight, mm -hmm. And realizing that this is one world, we're all different, from different backgrounds, different groups, we're not homogeneous. And what these people's ultimate goal is to strip away our humanity, our right to private property, our right to individualism, pack them and stack them in city centers. And uh, if you're familiar with the New World Order, that's another subject, but that's essentially what we're talking about. But of course you're, you're crazy if you talk about the New World Order, except for the fact that there's a tremendous amount of documentation from the 1980s and the 1990s, and all of a sudden went quiet. New World Order was spoken of by quite a few people. But just because they're not talking about it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Knowledge is power. Again, they're trying to set us at the bottom, Democrat, Republican, Conservative, Liberal, and it is not an issue that has anything to do with that. It has to do with our basic humanity, and the future of our species on this planet. If it sounds dire, it absolutely is. So I'll just open the floor to questions. Okay, first one. The last time I heard about this Agenda 21 was when I was at a Christian church and they were talking about the last days and were giving things like signs and wonders of those last days, particularly the name of Constance Cumbie and a book called The Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow came up that was describing a lot of kind of what you're saying tonight. Can you comment please if you've heard these names before or elaborate if you have? I'm familiar with the names but I don't really know enough to comment on it, but I can suggest that this has nothing to do with, with Revelation, but in WND, World News, World Net Daily, they have been doing stuff basically talking about the end of days and talking about um, with the, the, the Pope resigning and things like that. But that's, I feel, a little bit different subject from Agenda 21, but I would strongly encourage you to look up the name Charlotte Iservate, Charlotte Thompson, T T H O M P. I I think it's T-H-O-M-S-O-N, Iserbite, I-S-E-R-B-Y-T. She's written a phenomenal book, phenomenal book, called Charlotte, I-S-E-R-B-Y-T. She's written, uh, she, in the 19, in 19, between 78 and 80, she worked for the Reagan campaign. She was second in the Department of Education. And the stuff that she came up with as far as the education in our country basically underscores United Nations Agenda 21, because how do you get people to actually believe that your rights are not as important as that of the community? 
share oh, rights. Yeah. We all share, we're all members of the community. Each of us does not supersede one another. It's about respect. But communitarianism means that everybody else here has more rights than you do. And it's very easy to marginalize people in that manner. But Charlotte Isher, by her book, and she's done it, she has lived around the world, <coughs> and she, like I said, she was second in the Department of Education under Ronald Reagan. She got fired because she found out too much information. They originally were going to get rid of the Department of Education, and that's why she got that position. And she's just an amazing woman. I strongly encourage you to listen to her speak on YouTube. Rosa Corey is also on YouTube discussing her book, Behind the Green Mask. What did you say was the name of her book? Which one? Charlotte Isabel? Yeah. The Miseducation of America. Thank you. Uh, you had mentioned before TIFs, Tax Increment Financing Districts. I want to know what you have done. Um, have you worked with Ben Jarofsky or any of the other? What, what in terms of action have you done to protest TIFs? I personally have not. Through the 46th Ward, when they were trying to, you know this, this Maryville property is here. This is an example, I guarantee you, and I warned them. Because, well, see, I'm actually, because I'm the Republican committeeman, I'm not going to get any, any anything heard. The Democrat Party was listened to. I provided them with this information, the the people there, and they were working with Ben Jarafsky blowing the, the, the roof on TIFs. TIFs are deliberate. They're intentional. They are means by which to bankrupt communities to the point where, because we're not getting the, the real estate income, we cried to the federal government for help. But yes, I, I have been trying, but I would like to see, and I'm trying to get a groundswell to get Chicago out of Ickley because the, we're not talking true benefit tips. They look good, they sound good, but they're so, they're so evil. But have you shown up at any TIF meeting? Yes, have I have. Have you ever confronted yes. the, the planning board, the people who have to approve the TIFs? Have you ever talked to the ultimate about TIFs? Yes, I have. In fact, I bought this book for James Kaplan. I don't know if he ever read it, but he is now my alderman. And I think it is important that all of us, because the problem is this, that we have, a, we have only a one-party system here in Chicago. And this is a problem. That it may as well, why do we even bother having elections if we're only going to have one party and the one party holds sway that no matter what, things are going to get pushed through? Under Mayor Daley is how we got involved in ICLA. Daly was the one that got the, the TIFs basically pushed through. They never even heard of TIFs until maybe 1980, 81, 82, is when they really figured out this is a way. In fact, there's so many things that emanate from Agenda 21 that are here. Bicycle paths. Everybody here believes, and I know I, I like riding my bicycle too, but where do they find $19 million to build bicycle paths when they can't even repair our infrastructure? I was down over by, by Sox Park on 31st Street. Not only are the bike paths painted off, but they've got poles. They can't repair our streets, but they can put in bicycle paths. You can see the general outline of Agenda 21. All right, Bob Roscoe. Diane, I, when I lived in the city, I was more or less familiar. I watched what happened to those yards. I wasn't familiar with them political, you know, but I can see, you know, how that grew out of the TIF. My question is, can you please speculate on if this, if Agenda 21 is ultimately successful, as you suspect it's going to be eventually, um, what are they going to do with all these, on the way here, I, I was thinking about that, because I was passing all these residential neighborhoods full of bungalow homes and ranch homes and, you know, and, freestanding apartment buildings, what are they going to do? Well, I know where you're going. Yeah. Essentially what's happening is this. What they're really doing is, you know, about people that are underwater in their mortgage, this is all planned. Under Bill Clinton, when they were giving money to people to buy houses that they knew they couldn't afford, it was planned. Who got those properties? The banks. The banks can do with them as they see fit because the owners basically have forfeited them through foreclosure. And this is how 
all of this works, that eventually they've got this land and they can do with it as they see fit, and the money goes to certain preferred developers. Certain preferred developers, that's the operative word, sponsored by mega corporations. While we here at the bottom are being taught, oh, it's the green agenda, oh, be kind to the planet. Uh, it's a whole bigger picture than that. And it is the ultimate goal of basically bankrupting us. The price of electricity, the price of gasoline is bankrupting most of middle America. There are people I know who have to choose between getting eating and getting medical treatment. And if you live far enough out, and this is what they're trying to do, is to make the gasoline so expensive. And in California, did you see, okay, so fine, you went out and got your, your hybrid car, but because you're not generating enough gasoline revenue, now they're going to charge you per mile on that car that you're driving, that supposedly green vehicle, which is a tax on a tax on a tax. This is our government trying to impoverish and it is not a Democrat or a Republican issue. This is directly from the United Nations. This is happening whether it is, as I said, I was director of safety and education for a bay. Do you know they're trying to go to the United Nations for an international helmet law? An international helmet law. An international gun ban. Slowly, slowly. When they start calling the Constitution a living document, which it is not, the ground has been set. And they're teaching in the schools that the Constitution is an outmoded instrument. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I, I had a question. Um, you were complaining about restrictions put on you by your condo association board, and then you blamed that on the United Nations, but I missed the connection about how the United Nations runs your condo oh, no. association. No, 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 it's like what the United Nations does. The United Nations, the condo board, they basically are issuing directives that you must comply with. Yeah. Well, the condo association is all of the owners together. The United Nations doesn't own anything. The condo association is owners together, but there's also a condo board, and the board makes legislation. I'm just speaking to the microphone so everybody can hear. Often, the board acts in and of itself to create who wrote the original articles that you may or may not do this in your building. That's what I'm talking about. Hanging laundry outside on the balcony. <coughs> Uh, you may not, you, you have to have the cable TV that we have because we're not allowed to have an outside satellite, that everything must be uniform from the outside. You can't change your windows. Those are all from the condo association. That's something that you come in, it's given to you in a book. You don't have a right to fight this. This is what you have to accept, the same way with Agenda 21 when they made it mandatory for these... There is no mandatory. Agenda 21 is voluntary and non-binding. When this you look point. it up, as you suggested, voluntary and non-binding are the first two words. At this point, the problem is this, that's because so many people are unaware of what's going on, your rights are being more and more taken away from you. Somebody such as yourself may be indeed more knowledgeable. But to the average individual out there, the low-information voter, they just listen to maybe Channel 5 or Channel 7 or Channel 9. They don't go any further. They don't go to read the Christian Science Monitor. They don't go to online news services. They don't look at both sides of an issue. They only listen to one side of an issue. Look, White House Rural Councils is pretty darn scary. But we were more concerned about Anthony Weiner than we were about the passage of White House Rural Councils. Look it up. People were... Our attention was diverted. Our attention now is being diverted. The fiscal cliff is a whole is a whole game for the low information low information voter. All right, Diane. Briefly, uh, to me, a lot of you, you didn't mention climate change or global warming. I'm a complete global warming denier. It's all a hoax. That's my opinion. And well, global warming is part of Agenda 21. I do. I wanted to keep it a little bit short to the point, but global warming, 25 years ago, was global cooling they were worried about. Make up your mind. The problem is this, that we are being played. We're being played for our prejudices. We're being played for, oh, protect the world. Look, I have, since the 70s, taken my own grocery bags to the grocery with me because I can't stand having too much plastic. But that's... 
my comfort level. I learned that when I when I visited friends in Europe. I thought, oh, it was so cool, just keep them in my car and I can go to the grocery and it's fine. But there comes a point where they start playing us. Global warming, global cooling. What is it? What are statistics? In do you, fact, do you think it's a hoax? I think a lot of it really is a hoax because it's playing on our on our heartstrings. That oh, the the polar bears are dying and this is dying, but all of this is us being played. Why while we're so worried about little things, oh my god, I'm gonna send my contribution to UNICEF, my contribution to this, my contribution to that, what are these organizations really doing? Are we really being told the truth about everything or are our heartstrings just being tugged because of our prejudices? Hey, but what, wait, Mark, you wanted to, did I answer your question? I just wanted because to Because a lot mean. of it, the green agenda, sustainable, um, smart, all of this are basically means of control. And I want you to look up HARP, H-A-A-R-P. And it's, because it, there are a lot of acronyms. And I know what it is, but I want to tell you what the acronym stands for. Because I, I, when you go look up that video that I really want you to look up on HARP and Google and Agenda 21, you're going to go, oh my god, this is really going on. How many of you have Google Earth on your computer? Who doesn't have Google Earth? Who's never heard of Google Earth? Google Earth. Well, okay, that's my mother. My mother. What's Google Earth? They're photographing all around the world. You type your address into Google Earth, and the Earth will turn, and it will zero in on your residence. When I use my GPS and I type in an address to get to, it's got a picture of my destination when I arrive so I'll know what I'm looking for. They are charting the world. They are inventorying man and animal and habitat. This is going on. And now some of you maybe don't mind being photographed when you walk into a grocery store, when, you walk into, when you're going by the street and you see the blue lights and the red lights and the yellow lights and everything flashing. We're under surveillance. That girl, uh, Jan, in um, the one who, who got arrested for not wanting a smart meter on her property. In, in Naperville. Naperville, this is another thing that's part of, you can see with Agenda 21, the, 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 the smart meters, but the town itself is distributing the electricity. They're not getting it directly from Con Ed or any other electrical company. It is being provided for by the community. Therefore, the, you know, how many of you know about that um, Jen and the other one, her last Kim name was Bendis. Ben. Kim Bendis and Jan. Jan yeah, B and D I S was her last name, and G on the first one. They were just arrested a couple of weeks ago for not wanting to put a smart meter on their property. What is a smart meter? Why is it so fearful? There is a concern that they generate radiation, electromagnetism, that can affect some people very negatively. They were doing some experiments with with electricity in children. They were getting brain tumors up in Skokie, where they were near the uh, high wire. You have a question? All right, Gene Anderson. Yes, uh, where I'm sorry, Russell. I, I'm recognizing people that recognize Gene Anderson. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, I'm a little familiar with the United Nations. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm familiar with, at least that doesn't make me correct, but there are at least one entity that to me is more influence in what happened in the world than the United Nations. Now, are you saying the United Nations is the creative of this? Uh, are these entities, and that's one I'm not talking about, using the United Nations to carry out their agenda? This basically was the agenda of the environmentalists, the radical environmentalists, the ones who could otherwise be called earth worshippers, Gaia. GAIA, and Maurice Strong is one of those. They employed the United Nations to, to affect their agenda. But if you go back 
to the educational system back to the turn of the last century and under Woodrow Wilson with the League of Nations, they basically were trying to form a one world government at that time. And basically Wilson was at the forefront of that. And we've always had a balance, you know, liberal activism, conservative activism, liberal activism, conservative activism. But through the educational curriculum is another way in, by which they're getting more activism toward what I would call more liberal, but not classical liberal. Liberal in the sense that the agenda is more from the left than it is from the right as far as the environmental one. But it's at the upper levels. And this Maurice Strong, I strongly encourage you to look him up a little bit. Um, and I think, because he, he's Canadian, it's probably pronounced Morris, but Maurice is how I pronounce it, being American. I was just totally, I, I listened to some of his interviews from the 1970s, 1972, talking about essentially what they are forcing through. And so much of what we're seeing right now around us is from the 1970s and the 80s, and they found activists to push this agenda through. And they, they in fact, you'll, if you listen to Charlotte Esserbeck, she was involved at the, at, the, at the academic level in her community. And they were prevailing on community leaders to go to the corporations and the groups in the area to say that in the schools we need these curricula, not reading, writing, and arithmetic, and sex ed, and this ed, and that ed, and having nothing to do with basic general education to the point where they dis education from when maybe we went to school is way different now because they have to, they really have dumbed down the curriculum. Uh, Ma'am, I'd be interested sure. for, I, I, for, I, for personal mm -hmm. reasons. Sure. Would you tell me that you believe that the United Nations has the authority to do, uh, the power to do the things that you just said? I yes, mean, you they do. Not okay. only do they have the authority, they're, they're imposing the, their will the power, around the world. Yeah. The power has been granted, to, has been ceded to them the treaties. Oh, through right. treaties, like but the executive yeah, orders. What I, what I heard no, but stuff. we gave up the land of the United Nations. Rockefeller, names like Rockefeller, yeah. Carnegie. Uh, <coughs> uh, one pool at a time, I was recognizing Dave Zucker. Yes, you've referred several times to the Agenda 21, but not once have you spelled out what's in that agenda, and I'd like to hear what's in it. The agenda itself is basically to take the wealth of the West and redistribute it to the rest of the world. Okay. To take us off of our land, and to move us into city centers to make us dependent upon a large means of production, and they're doing it. Those are generalities. What are the specifics that are in that agenda? I, you can look it up on the internet. Everything specific is in there. This is what I'm telling you is the ultimate goal. The green agenda, you see words like green, sustainable, Big question this. What is the, the green agenda? All of the green companies that our government has invested in have gone bankrupt. All of them. Russell and then uh, Charles and David Trump. Oh, Pat Butler and then David Trump. <clears throat> Next. Um, Russell. Where does cities like Naperville get the, the, the authority to just <coughs> demand you have this kind of meter on your house and if you or won't let them on your property, they arrest you. You see, I don't know. But I will guarantee you that a lot of this goes on behind people's backs while they were sleeping because so many issues are not voted on by the community. You think you're voting for a certain candidate and you think that you're electing this person to represent you. But I have no idea how that would happen, but can you imagine that the city of Chicago would, uh, would opt to provide electricity to the whole city. And they could basically do something like that because they were elected. And as an elected body, they can make decisions, like you're talking about condo buildings. And I'm, uh, I'm sorry if I upset the fellow that was back there, but condo associations can make rules similar to that as well. They're elected and they can decide contracts being given to various groups say we want to have the windows replaced. 
the condo board is authorized to act on behalf of the people. We're very lucky, where I live at 4170, that we've got a board that involves everybody in day-to-day -day activities. But we've all seen county boards, just like city. How did the city of Chicago, I'm sorry, how did the city of Chicago get us involved initially? Did you vote on it? Did you vote on the city of Chicago? How many of you supported the Olympics in 2016? <laughs> Our city leaders got us involved in it. Not me. We own Michael Reese Hospital. Thank you very much. Nobody I know voted on that, and that property is still fellow. That property is ours, and nothing is being done with it. Russell, your question was answered. Okay. Charles? Can I have some Yeah, Diane, are you advocating a return to those idyllic days before there were environmental controls so that we had things like acid rain, super fun dump sites? Love canals? Oh, no, of course not. I mean, you offer no alternative to... I'm trying to find an alternative. There was enormous destruction of this planet by free market capitalism. And you just say, what, we should allow that again? I'm not saying we should allow the cars that cars you can have a car that produces all the smoke you want. All I'm trying to do is to enlighten people to United Nations Agenda 21. Well, does what it is and what it's about. 21 say maybe you shouldn't. Everyone should not own a car that puts out terrible pollution. No, ultimately they're saying everybody should not own a car. You should only have a bicycle. You should only put into the environment what you take out of it. That you have no rights. You are ceding your rights to the United Nations, to the New World Order, to your larger power. You have a one just that you honestly believe you have a right to a car? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If you could afford it. They do this in Mexico City. In Mexico City, you cannot drive the bill of rights except for alternate days. Do I have a right they to public you. transit? They control you because, because of their condition. You would tell me where you have a right to a car. God, where do you have a constitutional basis for this? Assertion? Well, then this is what's going a little further. We don't have the right to own private property either. Tell because... me where in the constitutional or legal process there's a thing that says everyone in the United States is entitled to have a right to a car. Sorry, you have a right to Please, buy any Mike, legal car. It's my product. turn. You have a right yeah, to buy any legal car. It's my turn, man. This is not a debate. You asked the question yeah. and yeah, answered the question. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not to speak. I'm sorry. You're not to speak. I heard you ask the question, so I thought I answered the question. I'm not asking somebody else to pay for my car if I can afford my car and buying it. I think it's important what right that everybody... What right do you have to buy the food you ate tonight? What right do you have to buy the shoes you're wearing? You dumb motherfucker! <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind? What right do you have to buy the shirt you're wearing? What right do you have to buy that coat? We live under an authoritarian government. We live under. I just got. Wait. Okay, wait. I believe that you have a right to own anything that you can afford to purchase for yourself. You don't have a right to demand for government to give it to you. Okay? But what Agenda 21 is saying is that the long term goal is to remove your right to own private property. So I have the right to own a polluting factory? That's what that... Uh, In Bridgeport, I'm going to set up... No, actually, a lot of job. this was, was done intentionally to break the... Uh, when they closed down a lot of these factories, many jobs were lost. But a lot of it, it's like even the, the Keystone Pipeline. The Keystone Pipeline, I think, should be built yesterday. Absolutely yesterday. Uh, well, can I answer the question? Sure. Uh, okay. uh, the Give her a mic, No, please. no. This question period. He's the speaker. She you know, asked me to. You have five minutes. Please, Charles. 
The speaker has delegated the answer. No, no. Yeah, Charlie, no, Charlie, no, we got no. enough time to, to, to let her yeah. answer. No. I believe that the a company has a right to operate to make a profit. I'm a believer in capitalism. Yes. But capitalism and communism and socialism can all live side by side. <laughs> It's been, it's happened that way in this country until the imposition of things like communitarianism where your rights are not as important as their rights. If a company is polluting, then they should be stopped from polluting, but they should not be from stopped from producing. You're taking away a person's right to make a living. I have a right to own a car. I have a right to buy whatever I want. I'm not asking you to buy it for me. I had a buck in my pocket. I'm going to buy it for myself. I don't expect government to give me anything. What and I was. What are you going to drive it on? Are you just going right, to keep it on? Uh, I think we're, 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 not, we're off of Agenda 21. You had your question. Right. All right. Uh, Pat Butler, and then Dave Travis, and then Lee Ping you on. Yeah, uh, Diane, you mentioned uh, several times the movement to get people off the farms and into the cities and implied that this was due to some centralized planning. But hasn't that movement been something that's been going on for more than a hundred years, where people have been leaving the farms? In fact, the trend has been so strong that even by 1918 or 1920, you had one of the hit songs of uh, that period, how are you going to keep them down on the farm? Now that they've seen three, how are you going to keep them down you on the farm? It. You got it. I mean, my, I'm yeah. a fifth generation American. The last thing my family wanted to see when they came over here was a farm. They headed straight from New York and Boston and Chicago. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you on that. But ultimately, what they want to do, and this sounds really quick, they want to take human beings off of Rural, rural lands to prohibit us from going on rural lands. They are not even paving certain county roads. Basically, you will have no access to your property, so there's no point in even trying to sell it because you will have to sell um, their easements that have to be sold. And eventually, it sounds it sounds crazy. I want you to look this up. I really want you to look this up. They like down in Texas. They're going to drive those rice farmers out of business. They will eminent domain that property and it will go to the county. And eventually, when they have their way, you are going to see corridors of our country that are prohibited access to human beings. They don't want man on certain land and ownership of land, according to the United Nations, is not possible. They don't want us to own private property. They don't want us to own land. They want to do what they can to get us off the land. And there'll be only a certain amount of mega corporations providing food to us. I mean, it sounds like soil green, and it's really not that far off from it. It sounds Orwellian. I'm going right back to what I'm saying. It sounds Orwellian. And that is why I thought it was such an important subject that I became passionate about after studying about it for the last seven years. And like this young lady over here asked me, yes, I was involved over here with the 46th War with Ben Jurafsky. Ben came in and we talked about it with okay, the uh, Maryville property there. And I warned them, I said, if you don't do something, if you don't act on it, they are going to call it blighted. The city is going to eminent domain it and they will give it to whatever person they feel and may have generated the biggest kickback, but this is Chicago, so what else is new? And this is a problem. But I wanted to wake other people up to it, like myself. And, and in the end, it may be just like, you know, sound and the fury, deal told by an idiot. You know, full of sound and fury, and at the end, signifying nothing. But at least to know what is going on, that there is something greater than us, greater than we, that it's out there, that it's in place, that it is real, and it can be researched. Uh, you mentioned something about a Gaia movement. Gaia. Gaia. G-A-I-A. Gaia is the Earth goddess. Is this 
the uh, organization that puts those boxes all over the city that wants you to donate shoes and Oh, no, no, not that I'm aware of. Gaia Gia, actually... It says the Gaia movement. It is. It's the same thing, but Gaia is the Earth goddess. I don't know if these people are involved with it at all. I have no idea if it's even legitimate. Yeah. But the people... They sure United don't have any problem getting their boxes put wherever the hell they want them. Well, what can I say? I, I, I'll tell you very honestly. When you start looking at the research and seeing the people that are involved with them, you start looking. Look up Charles and Esther Bit. Look up um, Dewey. Charles, what was his name? Dewey, Dewey Decimal System, the guy that was one of our early educators. Where these people got their education? In Germany, the Frankfurt School, Leipzig. And basically, our education is Pavlovian. It's based on operant conditioning. And it's, it's on a tangent from what you were saying. We have people that have a lot of money, like Maurice Strong, who have been, through their influential partners, been able to get Agenda 21. They said they were going to have it in many cities by 2002, and they did it. And here, 11 years later, we're seeing how many, how many new TIFs come up and public, public works projects. Where's all this money coming from? And why are the communities starving for funds? I just saw the 45th Ward uh, Arena gave back like $600,000, meaning no community improvements were made, and that was money that was allotted for the 45th Ward to do improvements, deliberately given back and not used locally. You tell me and we'll both know. Question period. Yeah, that's uh, related to an earlier question. I'm from Naperville, so I know a little bit about the smart meter. The city uh, uh, has a right to get police to arrest people because the meter itself is uh, the property of the city. So the city has a... a, a uh, authorized to access the meter, it, the, the, the owner, the house owner doesn't uh, have to provide the, uh, allow the access. So that's why those uh, people got arrested. Right, but, no, and I understand what you're saying, and I forgive me for cutting you short. Sure. The point is that where does the commute, where does the municipality get off? supplying electricity to all of its residents, and what if a resident says, no, no, I don't want this smart meter? Yeah, because the electricity system in Naperville is owned by city, I think the city will be happy if you disconnect your own house from the uh, electricity grid, and uh, then you, you just prepare your own electricity uh, by yourself, the city will not the right, your but the thing is that what guarantee do people have that they're going to be getting the best price for their electricity? Well, and this is the uh, thing, the municipality is now... Yeah, it's open market. If you want to get the, the, the best price, you can still uh, generate your home. Well, sure, you can get your own home generator, but the city went in and they arrested this woman, and there's still not enough conclusive evidence about smart meters themselves. <laughs> Yeah, I think on uh, that point there are lots of debate and uh, lots of debate in the, con the city council and uh, also online and uh, in various forums. But at the end, uh, the, the smart meter wins. Yeah, Jerry Schilling, who's a friend of mine, is involved with the uh, smart with the resistance to the smart meters. Yeah, they lose. They lost. I know. Just like uh, they lost also even with, with Rosa in uh, one of the towns in California. A number of communities have gotten themselves out of Ickley, which is yeah, out of Agenda 21. Weak. It can be weak. I'm not uh, judging which side is better, but it can be weak. We were bringing in the police. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty chilling. Where are you from originally? Originally, I'm from Taiwan. OK, so you know what goes on in China. Yes. And China has already enacted Agenda 21. I was there. I was in Nanning. Well, China is not a democracy. I know. Uh, but this so is... It's a, it's a, Next. Uh, Next. 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 Thank you.
Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I read a little bit about that in 21, and uh, it had its origins. It, it had its origins. Orig Did you stand? Uh, Rio de Janeiro about 1992, 93. And, uh, Somebody mentioned that, you know, it's not binding in the United States and its communities, obviously. But in order to make it binding, and read one of the obstacles for Agenda 21, you know, becoming an official policy here is because in order for that to happen, the United States government has to enter into a treaty and accept myself. It's got to go through both. Well, right, but by executive order, Barack Obama got the rural White House Rural Council completely bypassing Congress on this one. He himself has basically made it possible for people who reside in rural areas to be taken off of their land, whether it's through the EPA saying, oh, this is not safe, this is this, saying you cannot have your roads built, you cannot have them restored, you cannot have them maintained. And they can basically bankrupt you on your own properties, like they're obviously doing in Texas to the rice farmers. The means of local production is being taken away from people. You see, here is a one fool at the time, and I see that there are about six people talking. Meantime, the speaker is trying to go over whatever you're talking. So if you don't want to pay attention, what? Why don't you go and have your conversation somewhere else? You're supposed to have a moderator, right? Because uh, yeah, the cities have a planning guidebook that was given to Joe, them by the UN. Joe Mayer has the next question. Go ahead. Washing Ma, Wa Jo, Wa Jo. Taiwan, Busher, Talk to him, I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> you said you were a nanny. I visited nannying. Because I visited somewhere doesn't mean I learned the language. <laughs> My question is. Uh, but Agenda 21 is alive and well there. They got the UN. Award. That's not my question. Okay. Um, were, were you aware that the phrase New World Order has been used by Philip II of Spain in the mm -hmm. 1500s and by everyone? Oh, absolutely. And by everyone up to Adolf Hitler in 1927. Listen to Charlotte yesterday. Learn a little bit about Skull and Bones, and you'll find that New World Order has taken on different incarnations depending. But we're talking about Agenda 21, not the New World Order. That I'll be happy to discuss another time, but it's not relative or relevant to Agenda 21. Next. Uh, Tim Bolger. Okay. All votes, excuse me. Uh, Larry Beal. Hey, this is bring up the gun situation. Speak up, please. I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Uh, there, there is this push by Barack Obama I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I apologize. Well, all right. Uh, Barack Obama's charge, it appears to me, it, one of his charges it is to break this country financially. Cloward and Piven strategy to right. get people okay, on the dole. Part of this charge is also to what I call get the gun. Well, that's part of the United Nations, the United Nations as well. One of, uh, one of, of, of the tenets of Agenda 21 is to take the world population question, down uh, question, from man. Six to What's seven question? billion people down to about half a billion, and they would probably What's settle for one billion. Well, that is part of it as well. That's exactly right. Now, do you know how they plan to do that? I interpret it, my interpretation uh, is, question. if you will notice today, the, the control media talks an awful lot, lot about these vaccinations you have to get. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a whole, uh, it's, it's really not relative to, related to Agenda 21, but there is a belief, look, my, my sister got lymphoma. And it was traced to, as I found out, vaccines for Sabin and Salk or Sabin polio vaccine. The children of her generation got lymphoma as a result. There's a whole lot of other things. The seeding of the, of the environment with aluminum. So many things, but it's... My interpretation of, the, of this push towards one of these vaccines they, they are getting immune <coughs> to, to hearing all of this. And, and, and with oh, absolutely, and they want you to believe that you have to be crazy if you believe that there is such a thing as Agenda 21, that there is such a thing as 
oh, of course, the green agenda is real. Oh, and this is real, and that is real. It's not to say that there aren't real issues, but we're being deluded. Getting the vaccination. If you've gotten Jewish, yes. Hell no. Hell oh, yeah. Everybody's got to have I wouldn't get a vaccine if my life depended on it. That's what I mean. Because I don't know what's in the vector. But the now, point is. The way I see, they plan meeting that, okay. that uh, population. Okay. Frog, you have to moderate. All right. Just real quick, I just want to remind everybody that this is a question, period. We will have at the end of the question period, a chance to get up there on your soapbox and moderate and pro proclaim your views. Thank you. Please. Yes, we do have a period. It's too late, Bron. <laughs> All right. Now, questions? Any other questions? Uh, yes. Diane, what do you know between Monsanto and GMOs? Well, Monsanto and GMO, everybody knows what, what GMOs are, genetically mod modified food products. That, that, well, that is part of it as well, but I was just trying to get the, do the overview of getting people interested in finding out, well, why is this green agenda? I mean, 10 years ago, you never even heard the word green agenda. You never heard the word sustainable. You never heard the word smart. And all of a sudden, everybody's got a smartphone and a smart because I have a smartphone. But I never really thought of it as being like smart. I just thought, oh, you know, it's a name for it. But no, the technology that can track us, that can follow us, that can read us, they're doing some seriously crazy, strange stuff with, oh, with drones. They've got drones down to the size like of a mosquito. You think it's a mosquito, but it's really not. <laughs> but I want to stick to Agenda 21 because I think this is where so much emanates that takes you on different tangents, as it did with me. Although mine was kind of like in the reverse. When I was hearing up in the 45th Ward, when they wanted to build this transit village, and they called in a couple of people that were interested in, in building structures there, and they had the, the community there, and people talking, got me thinking, wow, this is interesting. And that's where I started thinking, well, why 10? Why 10 stories? seven stories, but why did it have to have retail underneath? Okay. Um, next Rob, question. Next question. I, I see that Charlie has a question, uh, but if anybody who hasn't had a question over there. has a question, yes, uh, Robert? What is this smart box that they put on? The uh, smart meter, basically, it's kind of creepy when you think about it because much the same as like you have GPS with your cell phone, they can pretty much tell just by your electricity usage when you're home, when you're not home. They can actually turn off, not just turn off your service because it's not paid, but if you've used too much electricity to their determination, they can shut off your power. I got a letter from the from ME, I don't have uh, Con Ed anymore, our building switched over to something ME, and they I got a letter from them your electricity usage is 142% higher than your neighbors. Wow. That was really creepy. Really creepy. But with smart meters, it's like everything. There are chips in it that they are able to read. They don't even, I mean, yeah, obviously they don't have to come to your house to read the meters. But there's an implication of an invasion of privacy that your normal meter wouldn't have that it actually, they don't know, I mean, and even what the radiation emanating from it could possibly do to people. There's not a sufficient research. Although, I was told by Jerry that they're, they're, they really don't like aluminum foil. <laughs> Oops. I use it for a hat. Cool, me too. All right, we have time for a couple more questions. Really? Uh, Tim Bolger, All right. Have you ever heard of a gentleman by the name of Fernando de Soto and a book called The Mystery of Capital? And if you have, can you comment, please? No, I haven't, actually. Like I said, I'm, I'm familiar with so much stuff, but I pretty much concentrated on certain things, and especially with the educational system, because I'm, I'm a former college teacher, and I worked for the county for 33 years, and there was so much that I saw along the way. And I, I am 
as, I'm using my retirement to enhance my brain to acquire more information. As, as a corollary, what about The World is Flat by uh, Thomas, Thomas Friedman. Friedman? I've read that. I'm, I, I understand what he's, general, what he's getting at, but I mean, as far as how do you relate it to Agenda 21? I mean, he talks about, you know, globalization and... Uh, well, globalization, yeah, we are the global village. One world, think globally, act locally. A lot of it is like, you can teach kids a mantra in school, and this is what brought me to Charlotte Isserbet, mm -hmm. with the indoctrination rather than educating of students. And I was seeing it as a college educator, and even from my own education. I had a pretty well-rounded education, all things considered. And when I see what these kids are learning, and it's like, wait a minute, they don't even say the Pledge of Allegiance anymore in the schools. You know that. Because they have determined that under God now makes it a prayer. Well, then my money that says in God we trust must be holy as well. It's a civic God. It's not a God God, it's a civic God. It's an understanding of belief in a higher power. And that's basically what our nation was founded upon. And uh, and and as, a, as a corollary, very quickly, I told you, I go into the schools and I do a presentation called Share the Road. I was at Shures High School. They were handing out Bibles outside of the school. And these kids took them inside the school and they were throwing them at one another. And I don't care what your religion is. The point was that these kids didn't understand the concept of Bible throwing books at one another in school. Mm -hmm. And absolutely no restraint <coughs> was made on those children. And it was kind of kind of weird to watch all this happening. No, it's Shur's High School. When would I go to Decatur School? I haven't attended Decatur since 1967. Okay. But I'm just saying, as a corollary, what has happened, and we're all of a, of a similar age. I'm 56 years old. I'll be 57 in October. I had basically classical education. And we learned a lot of stuff in school, and yeah, I, but they started talking about the curriculum changing around 70, 71, 72. Yes, it has. And I started looking, and looking back, <laughs> they're not getting in the schools the same education that we had, and we're here at free choice. We choose to be who we are. These kids are not being given a choice. They're being, they're being turned into little drones. The educational system is producing drones. It's producing not even people fit for the workforce. And they're being given an opportunity to drop out of school at 15, see if we care, it's okay, bye. We'll cut you loose. What does a 15-year-old do without an education? 20 years ago, when I was in high school, there were community, you, you could go to the community college and get a GED. Or if you didn't want to finish your high school education, you could go to a career academy. You could get a career. You could learn something. You didn't have to have a high school diploma to learn a skill. They're not there now, and these kids can't even get into the military. I'm not saying I'm an advocate of war, but I'm saying you can't even get into the military without a high school diploma. They don't, you can't enlist in the military and get a GED like you could in the past. We're creating drones. We're creating kids that are being taught with outcome-based educations, having nothing to do with learning something. They're memorizing to the test. They're getting computers, and, com and the computer is rewarding them for their for their answers. This is why we need to know about things like Agenda 21 and to read about our educational system. Friends, we're all interconnected. We may have different political beliefs and different philosophies, but we're all traveling here on the same planet, and we breathe the same air. We may agree to disagree, but knowledge is knowledge. Knowledge gives you power. Don't believe everything you're told. Ask questions. Question authority. Um, Bill Fung, do you have a question? No, I do not have Oh, I thought you were saying. I need to talk to someone else. All right, Charles. Yeah, Diane, you, you say there's this hypothetical threat for the plans of the United Nations, yet I was, couldn't help thinking about the actual activities of corporations and multinational corporations that have been going on for several years thinking of things like what we saw in the Gulf of Mexico with an oil spill and 
you think you, you apparently think that multinational corporations are preferable. This is what is happening. Sort of it's not me. I'm just giving you the I'm just showing you what is being check, done. Do check, I agree? Do I disagree? The only check on multinational corporations that I can perceive there is is the United Nations. Right, the United Nations is an evil but body. They want to take away so our wealth. We don't, if we get rid of the U.S., Look, Charlie, we want to turn this over to multinational. Where did they send those, those drilling rigs? They sent them to Brazil, and our president, Barack Obama, said, You'll be our best, we'll, we'll be your best customer. There is a global agenda. Who's to say? This is just throw out for speculation, but that was not an act of sabotage. If you don't want the UN, you want multinational corporations. I would like to see people get out. I think I would see getting the United States, the United States out of the United Nations for the long-term <laughs> plans that they have. You don't do anything about multinational corporations. That's outside of my purview. I would like to see the United. I would like to see America out of the United Nations. The United Nations is planning our redistribution of wealth around the world. Read Agenda 21 to take us off of our land. Where does Agenda 21 say that? It's in it. What chapter? What page? What chapter? You keep what making up all this stuff. It's go. not there. All right. uh, it's in Agenda 21. All right. Uh, Pat, yeah, uh, you just mentioned you'd like to see the uh, United States get out of the United Nations. And there is much about the United Nations that, you know, we need not be ecstatic about. But if we get out of it, doesn't it make it much more difficult for us to fight the very things it's rhetorical. That we don't want to happen? But see, it's rhetorical because we are locked into the United Nations. We're practically 60% of the United Nations. Rhetorically, I would like to see us out of the United Nations once you start researching what the Rockefellers and the Carnegies were really involved in, and as our educational system has been colored by their vision for us. I'm only here to talk about United Nations Agenda 21, what is planned by Agenda 21. Of course I have an opinion. You know, if, if you don't have an opinion, then you stand for nothing. I would rather have an opinion and and learn that I'm wrong than not have an opinion at all and just go along to get along because that's what too many people do. And they don't see what's really going on. Why are we in Italy? Who signed us on to Italy? How did we get involved with Italy? What's with all these, how many of you, okay, so fine, bicycle paths. But here you are, you can't even fix our city streets, but you're putting in bicycle paths. You can't keep our street lights fixed, but you're putting in bicycle paths. What? I know. It's Chicago. And we're unfortunately accustomed to some of the most uh, corrupt of all governments across the country. But it's our fault. We vote for these people. If we stand together, we can make a difference. I'm just here basically to explain United Nations Agenda 21, what it's about, what is written in it, and if you disbelieve a single thing that I'm saying, I want you to go to the original source. What's the websites and where can we find those sources? Just, you, just type in UN at United Nations Agenda 21 and you'll get the Rio Earth Summit. Okay. And it's all in there. You can read it for yourself. I'm just basically uh, Cliff's Notes of Agenda 21. Believe me, it's pretty scary when you start looking at it, and I started looking at it a few years ago and thinking, wow. But there are people that not only want to see this implemented, but they're getting it implemented. Whether it's Delphi technique, which they tried to do in the 46th, we're talking about, uh, what is your name, young lady? Karina. The, Karina and Diane. They were Delphiing us. And I called them on it. I said, this is a Delphi session. You are trying to tell us that this is what we want when it in fact is not what we want. And a few people, they applauded. But the planning commission people, and the planning commission ought to set your teeth on edge. Because anything planned, think on it. Planning necessarily creates serfdom, creates, ine creates inequality, creates dictatorships. Just like a condo association. 
it becomes a dictatorship. And that's what central planning is all about, and that's why I'm just trying to bring this to people, bring this to people's attention. Together, this is an on, education is an ongoing cybernetic process. I'm not asking you to agree with all of my opinions, but I am asking you that if you don't believe the research that I'm presenting, to look it up yourself and then challenge me. Agenda 21 is in place, it's being enacted. Maybe if we wake up we can get ourselves out of it, I don't know, it might be too late, but at least to understand that we're being played. How about rebuttals? Oh, you don't want no questions, John. We have a period now of rebuttal. Yeah, over there. In the rebuttal period, in the rebuttal period, uh, we measure the time so that everybody who raises their hand now uh, will get a chance to give a rebuttal. Uh, how many people have uh, some uh, remarks to make on this? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Roughly about uh, five minutes, at Charlie. Least no, how about three oh, yeah. minutes? About no, five. five minutes apiece. Uh, and, uh, uh, allowed five minutes apiece. You don't have to take up the five minutes, but at least. All right. So, uh, and at that, at the end of that time of rebuttals. Uh, by the way, we have people uh, sitting up here waiting to give rebuttals, uh, and I will recognize them, and they will speak. At, at the end of that time, uh, Susan, uh, ah, perhaps Susan, uh, Diane, will, <laughs> will uh, have a chance uh, to rebut the rebutters and clarify uh, all our misconceptions, okay? One more round of applause for our speaker, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Right. All right, and our, our, uh, all right. So our first rebutter uh, will be uh, Frank Aguilar. <laughs> you know, I was for a minute I was concerned about the safety of this place because, as we all know, or we think we know, that the beginning of the universe started with the infinitely dense amount of matter and all of a sudden this exploded into a big big uh, uh, ball of fire and for a minute I saw so much bullshit condensed in this small space that it was dangerous that this could start a new universe you know what a singularity a singularity of bullshit man oh man it was really really amazing how much uh, misunderstanding misinformation uh, interpretations that they could be taken anyway and pretending that to be you know the, the real world and uh, the, thing, the thing that is sad is that so many people eat this up like it was uh, the real thing it's just it's just amazing uh, we we do need uh, to to be in a in a, a society we need rules and regulations, and uh, we we did. I le lived in a uh, building that they have many owners, and we meet and uh, in the board, and we decided we voted if we wanted to have some things or not have some things, and there were reasons for that that the people who who own the building. Yeah, it's usually here. It's one full at the time because if you are if you are talking, you are not paying attention to somebody else. And if I am talking, I'm not paying attention to somebody else. So it's really courtesy. And uh, the same like in the in the building where there are many tenants, 
they are rules and we have to respect them. If we don't, then what kind of a society we have? So that uh, we, we need to have a path for bicycles, uh, it seems like it's very uh, logical and that will save not only uh, in, in gasoline, but it will save on us to have to pay for petroleum that we don't have or that we have to import. So those decisions, whether we have a bicycle path or we will have antennas on the outside of the building, they come out of uh, reasoning and uh, a dialogue between adults, people. See, that's the same thing going on in there. They are having their own conversation and they are, well, fuck, I, you know, you, you keep going. <laughs> A short correction uh, for our speaker. Um, operation Paperclip. Uh, the phrase and the operation was begun in 1945 uh, when the United States Army, under the uh, leadership of uh, Dwight Eisenhower, uh, coined the phrase when he moved uh, Werner von Braun and 80 of his team members to Mexico. Uh, because you could not enter the United States if you were a uh, member of the Nazi party or the SS Waffen. Uh, shortly thereafter, continuing Operation Papercliff, uh, Von Braun and his team were moved to Ciudad Juarez in Mexico and then across the border at El pa in El Paso uh, as Mexican immigrants so they would avoid the process of being Nazis in the United States. Um, Individuality must supersede the general good. That's the message I got from our speaker. And that leads, of course, to rights in conflict, which in turn leads to isolation. However, our speaker made a, uh, a, a strange contradiction there. She said, uh, quote, uh, if we stand together, uh, we can make a difference. So you can't be an individual always you have to have cooperation with others. Um, I agree with uh, uh, some of the things that uh, Diane Shapiro uh, uh, mentioned. Um, for example, in the, the subject of uh, news, international news, uh, you may have seen on one of the public uh, channels, television channels in Chicago, the British news, BBC news. Well, there's a committee uh, it's comprised of uh, a group of British uh, uh, intelligence people and United States people, and they vet what is suitable for the American public. On the other hand, there is a German news broadcast also on the public uh, channels. Uh, it's called uh, Journal Deutsche Welle and uh, Deutschland Deutsche Welle. Um, so we get a different perspective between the British news, which is vetted for us, and uh, the German news, which is not. Yet it's permitted to be broadcast here. Um, the technology that we have uh, experienced uh, is good. Perhaps. Uh, Google Earth has wonderful um, views for us to look at uh, various parts of the, the world and see what's going on. Uh, if, if we use it for that purpose, it's wonderful. But it can also be misused, for example, by ad agencies and um, other fe and, and federal agencies. Um, the comment that uh, our speaker made uh, to the effect that uh, capitalism must merge with socialism. Uh, that's not true. Uh, they're diametrically opposed. We can, we can modify that phrase to the same extent that capitalistic, somewhat like capital, uh, and socialistic thoughts can be merged, but they always end up as capitalism. Um, several times during our speaker's uh, presentation, the name Maurice was uh, uh, brought up. So uh, I think 
our speaker's philosophy more closely resembles uh, uh, that of the late Maurice Sendak. Oh, God. Well, speak with you. You can depend on me. Why you can depend on me, you was talking about Agenda 21. And you did a good job talking about Agenda 21. Now, if mine want to run this way, and mine want to run this way, and Velocity want to expand, then we might, some of us might have a little problem. But I don't have no little problem with what you was presenting. Now, I wish I could narrow mine to so one entity like the Agenda. But I have to start where it first started. And that's what, when they had three people on the earth, two of them decided to take advantage of the walk. Now, you mentioned something that I agree with full heart. They're turning out robots instead of people's education. But that's not new. That's not new. When they come up with, resist, uh, with, with organized religion, and that goes real bad, the principle of that was for the masses. Like Mom said, you had not the time to master. Public school, give me a break, please. What dude that came don't teach his followers? Other than that, what's going to assist him, keep him in power, and give him more leadway to take away from the individual? Now, the end of defensive individual is oldest man because. It's, 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 it's so clear that the blind man can see this. Now, if you're familiar with the Old Testament, what did they say? They said you was born with original sin. In other words, you ain't shit. Therefore, you need somebody to get you like this and whatever this is. Now give me a break. <coughs> Why am I or anybody else with any sin? want to follow another human being. But another human being has no more power and no more authority, no more knowledge possible than I got. But if they don't uh, brainwash you, in other words, they don't robotize you, they can tell you whatever they want to do. But this has been known for the beginning of time, long before Agenda 21. We had people like Spinoza that and his sidekick, John Dewey, who they murdered because they were trying to defend the individual. If you read Hegel, you find that he was pro-individual. And he pointed out all of the things, not all of them, but some of the things that were, that, that was automatically against trying to be the individual that you want to be. He called them antagonism. And two of them just imagined them this government, for one, don't want you to be individual, then you got society that don't want you to be individual. But guess what? You got people that don't buy that. If you read Descartes, you find out he said, it's better for a child to be brought up alone than to be misled by the elders and the so-called experts. He said it takes me 40 years to get over the shit that they taught me. Now, if you want to jump from him, I can go to the port, to heal the broad. When the lady said, what are we going to do about the babies? Prophet, he said, they come through you, but not from you. Give them your love, but not their thought, because they have their own thought. These was babies he was talking about. St. Paul said, when I'm a child, I think as a child, and now I'm no longer a child, stick that up to God. Now, we can defend ourselves because I just named three people that defend themselves to be an individual. Buddha said, I don't have to take this, I'll go out in the woods. The point is that ever since the beginning of time, there's a few people who want to use all of us. But some of us gonna say, you can go jump in the lake. Yeah. I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore.
My name is Michael Foley. I'm really glad I was here tonight. I'm glad I heard you talk, Ms. Shapiro. I agree with almost every word that came out of your mouth. I really believe, and I have for many years believed, that there is a very large group of people who's trying to enslave us all. They are going about destroying our country, our economy, our society, our culture. Things like uh, one world, you hear the phrase one world government, a new world order, things like that. And a whole lot of other different phrases that refer to different groups or subgroups or whatever. But I do believe that there is one group, a very, very small group of individuals who really control a vast organization that does want to enslave the whole world. One thing I want to say about NGOs is, the phrase NGO stands for, the, the letters NGO stands for non-governmental organization. And these organizations try to act like they're some kind of altruistic organizations trying to save the world or whatever they're trying to do. But the vast majority of non-governmental organizations are actually governmental organizations. They get their money from governments, they're hired by government, they're paid by government, they're trained by government, they get their work assignments from government, <clears throat> they're told what to do by government, <clears throat> but they look like just some kind of altruistic organizations out there trying to save the world and do good. Another thing, I was trying to ask a question tonight, but I just can't really phrase it properly because I know that a lot of times people ask me the question, I haven't got much of an answer for it. I want to ask Mr. Shapiro, Mr. Shapiro, what are the names of some of the people behind all this? Now, you did mention one of my favorites, David Rockefeller. Yeah, I think that David Rockefeller, when he was headed to Chase Manhattan Bank for how many years, whatever it was, 20, 30 years, and the Rockefeller family, the Ronald Rockefeller organization, I think David Rockefeller really was the emperor of a very, very large part of the world. And unless his brain has turned to mush, I think he probably still is. He's probably one of these old geezers, 95 years old, that still rules with an iron fist. But I'm not sure. It's really hard to tell who are the masters at the highest levels of power. Because they don't go off, they don't go running in front of TV cameras all the time. Sometimes it's easy to tell who the slaves are and who the lackeys are. Last, I think it was last October, there was a woman here, her name was Nancy Wade, she was running for Congress, I think from this district, the 5th district. Pat Butler himself tried to get her to resign her candidacy. Right over there in that room, he tried to get her to resign her candidacy right at this meeting when she was giving a campaign speech. And he told her the best way she could get her agenda implemented was to resign her candidacy and go suck the shit out of Mike Madigan's asshole and ask him to implement her candidacy. <laughs> Pat Butler is a slave of the empire and I said it that night and I'll say it again. Oh, Pat Butler is a slave of the empire. That is not an attack, that is a statement of fact. Shut up, one fool at a time. I'm getting to you. I'm glad I was here tonight because Charlie Paydock tried to get us to believe do you have to have a line written in the Constitution of the United States of America to say that you can buy a hamburger in this restaurant or a car or the shoes on your feet? Charlie Paydock sitting there saying, you show me in the Constitution, tough guy, you show me in the Constitution where it says you've got a right to buy a car. Charlie, the Constitution is not there to prescribe what human beings are permitted to do by their friggin' government. The Constitution is there to tell the friggin' government what limited number of things it is permitted to do by us. You friggin' dummy. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie Paydock. Uh, 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 20 uh, years ago, Charlie Paydock was using the name David Koresh. He told me that. I asked him if he had been David Koresh 20 years ago, and he told me yes, he had been David Koresh 20 years ago. Charlie uh, Paydock is also some kind of slave of the empire. <laughs> oh, no. All right.
Socialism brought into a capitalist system, it begins to metastasize and do away with capitalism little by little until capitalism finally is fully overthrown. So capitalism and communism, capitalism and socialism uh, are not compatible. Uh, perhaps capitalism and communism can coexist in different countries in the world, but not uh, together in one country where you have some socialist policies and some capitalist policies. That uh, doesn't work, and Keynesian economics has shown that it doesn't work. Uh, I would like to say, I'd like to, to say that I remember the um, uh, bad pollutions and things that we had. And I'd like to say that in spite of all of those things, please take government off of my back. Give me Love Canal. Give me the pollution. Give me the polluting cars. Give me all of it and let me defend myself against savage Indians and gangs and every other kind of thing. And I want the government to stop protecting me from myself. And by the way, where it says in the Constitution that we have a right to drive a car, it says that people have a right to come and go as they please. That would include a car. <laughs> Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And a car. The pursuit of the beauty. Big car, small one. So, let me have my beloved America back for all the faults that it had. It is a, it, it's a thousand times better than what we have now. Yes. And that's it. Paranoia is the delusion that your enemies are organized. I would like, very briefly, to point out two simple things. No one here actually has learned anything about Plan 21 tonight. They didn't already know, unless you Google it on your phone like I did. And we still haven't found where this goofy made-up word communitarianism comes from. All right. Fascinating presentation, Diane. Thank you. I got an earful tonight, and I can promise you at the very least that I will find out more. The temptation to bring politics into it for me is very strong, but I will refrain and just try to get this into like a minute or less. It all makes really, really good sense to me, ever since Ronald Reagan was elected especially. If you think about it, tips, foreclosures, intelligent, whatever they call that stuff to artificial intelligence, thank you, and, and intelligent, whatever that stuff is, the excuse for uh, Darwinism versus uh, religion in the classroom and all that stuff. What is it? 
Intelligent design. Intelligent, intelligent design. design. Thank you, Corina. And all that other stuff. You know, the foreclosures is what really gets me, and 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 and, and it's it's like. There has been, we've had a lot of stuff foisted on us over the last, especially over the last 30 or so years. So I think from what I've gathered so far, I think perhaps Agenda 21 is one aspect of all this that's going on. But coming from a leftist point of view, it's easy for me to just kind of dismiss Agenda 21 as one thing that's going on among, among thousands and thousands of things. But it does make a lot of sense Right, right. Like, as you said. And Rosa Corey, she'll come out and she'll tell you, she's, she's a Democrat, she's gay, she's this, she's It's your turn. Finish the yeah. turn. Yeah. yeah, right. And, 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 you know, it, it, that's, that's basically what, you know, it, it does make a lot of sense when you think about, you know, I don't believe in, I don't believe in gun ownership rights. I'm very much anti-gun. However, um, <coughs> That could be well be a part of it too. And the decline of manufacturing and agriculture in this country over the last 30 years. If you look at that, that's where the property rights kind of, kind of, you know, begins to to go in. Thanks. Now for a saner voice, Margaret. I don't know if I'm saner, but I got more sleep than anybody else in here tonight. Um, and um, I'm sorry, I was very tired, so I slept through most of your talk, but that of course doesn't uh, limit me from speaking and criticizing it. The part that I did hear was the part about the uh, immunizations. I've been a registered nurse for about 40 years, and um, I will tell you, I'm about 10 years older than you, when I was a kid uh, and they found the soft vaccine, you better believe that we were lined up to get the polio vaccine. And, um, and if you will look at statistics since then, the death rates for children from polio fell like a stone after the immunization program. So we do not have people afraid that their children are going to be dying in a polio epidemic because there were, there were polio epidemics then. There were all, and I would be willing to bet that you were uh, immunized as a child against uh, diphtheria, tetanus, and... Um, yeah, and diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus. And the reason that you do not have typhoid now is because you were, diphtheria now actually, is because you were immunized against it. And so immunizations, um, there's been absolutely no scientific evidence to link the vaccines with autism, with cancer, and so that, uh, you know, when you said that, I thought, oh my God, what bullshit. Because, uh, you know, if you say something like that to me, then your scientific basis for practically anything else you had uh, that you put out is very suspect as far as I'm concerned. Because if you don't have that basic understanding about vaccines, then, you know, how do you know anything else? I mean, you, you do talk a good game. You really do. You sound very intelligent. But um, when you really, when you said that vaccines gave you cancer, I thought, where? Yes, you did. You said lymphoma. She got lymphoma that was traced to a vaccine, an immunization. That's not what she said. Well, that's what I heard. Yeah, well, that's a quote. Anyway. All right. Wait for your five minutes. Well, I guess I have been outed this evening. Yeah. I am officially a slave of the empire. That fucker, you outed so yourself. Now, you outed yourself. Have, my my, my, you outed yourself. When I have tea with my cousin, the queen, I'm sure that she will knight me, uh, or at least make me a member of the House of Lords. Uh, I, I didn't realize, I, I, I'm not sure which candidate I told to give up her candidacy. Um, I must have been out of the room at the out of the room at the time I, I did this because it's brand new to me. Uh, but I wouldn't question your judgment or your memory. Uh, that's well established. Um, we heard a lot of interesting and very provocative comments tonight. But I, I, I gotta I gotta say, amid the grains of good sense, I also wonder 
what the hell is wrong with a mixed-use development where you have retail and residential in one building near a transportation center? I, for one, if such a development were to be built, would, would, would want to uh, look at some floor plans and look at some model apartments because I might very well want to move in there and I don't think I'm alone. I think that's a very convenient thing in an urban environment. Now, if we all want to go back to the farm, and if we all want to go back to, you know, rural life, that's fine. Be my guest. I'm staying here in Chicago. I like it. Um, I use public transportation by choice. It's not because any government is pushing me to do that. It is because in Chicago, it is generally a lot more convenient to use buses or cabs or L trains or a bike uh, than uh, uh, try parking try parking your car in most neighborhoods. It's not a terribly convenient thing anymore. This is not 1950. Um, as far as Google taking photos of the entire planet. I don't know about you, but I, I put that to good use. When I'm going into a neighborhood that I'm unfamiliar with and I want to find directions, I'll take an aerial photo of that area off Google and I'll have a pretty good idea where I'm going and I don't get lost. You know, there's a practical use for it. And as far as the fact that some satellite might get a picture of me <laughs> standing in front of my uh, uh, apartment building uh, somewhere, I really don't know exactly how I'm going to be harmed by that. I mean, unless I am committing an unnatural act in Lincoln Park. <laughs> you can take all the pictures of me you like, okay? And you can take all the pictures of my block you like. Uh, it'll only make it easier for my friends to find me. Um, you know, really, you made some interesting points. You made some very valid points. At the same time, I, I really wondered whether this wasn't rapidly becoming an exercise in paranoia here. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Three uh, she's next. She's, she's next. Oh, we want to hear what she has to say. Get up there and get up there and rebut. I like I just want to say something very quick, okay? Even Hold the microphone. I'm very sorry. Even you working like registered nurse for 40 years or more, but you said a lot of people disagree with you said about vaccine. Because it doesn't, it's very controversial and it's a lot of proof it's developed. Down syndrome, autism, and stuff. You know why? Because I used to work in medical uh, field also. And what you said and you like open your mouth, I'm very sorry to, I, I don't want to be rude. But if you open your mouth and you start to scream and you start to raise your voice and you say vaccine uh, absolutely doesn't do harm, it's maybe you 50%, maybe at least 50% you're wrong. Because vaccine, it's very controversial, really nobody knows what vaccine made for. And if vaccine will not give results like immediately, you never know what effect vaccine can give after you know after a while. So you a little wrong. Sorry. You're a whole lot wrong. But if we don't know, how can you say that's fifty percent wrong? Because you right. know never mind. <laughs> David Sucker. Because it's very controversial. Next. Right, Next. Next. I've heard Chuck Paynock call many things before. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever called her and call a slave of the empire. <laughs> I'm not sure I know how to follow that. Um, <coughs> no, it won't be like that. Other remarks to make, I think. Yes, indeed, I did. <laughs> um, I had hoped to find out more about this Agenda 21. I did not. With all due respect to our speaker, whose courage in facing this group I do admire, um, all I got was, all I, at least all I heard, was a recital of the same kind of conservative chivalrous that had been coming out of Washington since the Reagan era the same kind of extremist nonsense. It didn't have to be this way. Uh, 60 years ago, when a Republican who was an outstanding leader, Dwight Eisenhower, became president of the United States. Some of you have heard me tell this story before, I admit. 
delegation of old of members of Congress from the Old Guard, his party. The new Speaker of the House, Joseph Martin, was there. The new President, pro tem of the Senate, Stiles Bridges. The new Senate Majority Leader, Bob Taft. The new Senate Majority Whip, William Nolan. Our state's own junior Senator, Everett Dirksen. And the new House Majority Leader, Charles Halleck. And these people said, now we're going to um, dismantle the New Deal. President Eisenhower said to them that while he wasn't going to start anything new, any new social <coughs> programs, he was not going to take away from the people what they had already been given. And he went on to say, it's not 1860 out here anymore, and that if the Republicans want to become the majority party in this country, instead of being the minority party, he said they're going to have to, get, they're going to, have to live in the modern world with everybody else. And at a subsequent such meeting, President Eisenhower said to them that if they wanted to be the majority party, the Republicans were going to have to stand for three things, Social Security, unemployment insurance, and a farm program. That apparently is a lesson, judging by what I've been hearing from Washington, particularly during the past week, that the Republican Party has yet to learn. Next came the slurs that were directed against President Wilson, who was hardly an evil man. The Federal Reserve System was an improvement over what it replaced, the old national bank system. President Wilson also made many other progressive changes, including the appointment of the first Jew to the Supreme Court, Louis Brandeis. Thirdly, with regard to the development of high-rise housing, that started during the administration of the elder Mayor Daley, and Mayor Daley did that in order to keep a healthy tax base here in the city so it didn't all go fleeing out to the suburbs. And in that score, he was successful. Chicago didn't go the way of Detroit or St. Louis or any of a number of our other major cities. Second, I'm an old-time Chicago and Cook County What's Democrat. I worked for Cook County for 30 years yeah. myself until From I retired last point fall of view. the court mm -hmm. system. And the I think I'm entirely in favor of the like activity of the local Republican so Last night, the funeral home. Onions and mushrooms. You asked me if I wanted mushrooms. Where did you go? All know. right, well, I don't feel I should have to um, take that. Justice Holmes, Justice Holmes, you get your chance to rebut me later. Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, one of our greatest jurists, pointed out that taxes are the price he paid for civilization. <laughs> He also pointed out that the Constitution is indeed a living document and that it is an experiment, as all life is an experiment. Um, finally, there was a reference that, and oh yes, with regard to polio, I will say simply that I'm going to be 59 in a few weeks. And you can be damn sure that my parents were very grateful when the soft vaccine came out so they could make sure that me and my brothers, when they came along, would not get polio. My aunt suffered from polio. She was not par permanently paralyzed. But she suffers to this day from post-polio syndrome. Uh, finally, a comment was made earlier about communism living side by side with capitalism. Some of you, she, she also mentioned communism too. I will say simply this, and again I apologize, some of you have heard this before. Many years ago there was a meeting in Moscow, a seminar, and in which they discussed the difference between capitalism and communism. And at this meeting, somebody stood up and said, what is the difference, Comrade Chairman, between capitalism and communism? The chairman said, that's a very important question, Comrade. I'm glad you asked it. It was a, it's a very interesting question. Under capitalism, man exploits man. And under communism, it's the other way around. <laughs> And they should tell me. They're bold. <coughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be honest with you tonight, this is the first time I've heard about this Agenda 21. However, it does remind me a lot about some research I did in the early 80s and late 90s 
about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the formation of the new world order and one world government. And it was kind of very interesting because what I have seen here was quoted in a lot of eschatological studies that I had looked at through various local churches. And the one thing that kept coming to my mind was, and the mark shall be that of a man, and his number shall be 603 score and six, and that nobody shall be able to buy or sell without the mark. Well, when I look today around at things like PayPal, Google Checkout, the vast pervasiveness of the internet, the aggregation of data into central servers by such companies as Axiom, A-X-C-I-O-M, and the further improvements we've seen in our lives from data, but at the same time our privacy going out the door because this information can be readily had by anybody. The one thing I will have to say is that the trend for one world government is coming and that inevitably as we more connect with the world we're going to see some kind of world government. It's up to us what we choose. Is it going to be a democratic institution or some kind of imposed dictatorship from above? Just a minute. Is it going to be a, a democratically elected form of government or is it going to be some form of corporatocracy or dictatorship? The choice is ours. There is a movement afoot that many of you may not realize by the man of a, by the name of he ran, runs an institute called the Albert Einstein Institute. And he wrote a book. It was called How to Start a Revolution. His name is Gene Sharp. And what he does is he talks about tearing down of, of, of governments that are totalitarian and replacing them with democratic governments. His work is completely online. And it basically has about 300 different ways that citizens in a, in, a, in a dictatorship can bring down a democracy, such things as not showing up to work, such things as maybe not cooperating with the central authorities and the enforcement of rules, and other nonviolent ways to bring it down. And the thing is, it comes from the citizens of that country. And if they can bring down the government themselves and replace it with a democratic government, we don't have to have these international interventions. The one thing that has happened around the world that I'm very grateful for is the propagation of a uniform standard. We see it all the time in the development of something called HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is basically means that you can communicate with anybody else via this piece of software. Also in the Consumer Electronics Association, there is much more standardization of cables and formats and video feeds and other things that allow us to communicate a lot better and a lot more. And a lot of these are done in committees and in planning organizations. But it's done on a, and it's done on a voluntary basis. Now, as far as bike paths and global warming or anything else, Many of you guys have heard me speak about a different form of nuclear power called thorium. And I know that it's very controversial. I just want to remind everybody that if you're interested in learning a lot more about it, there's going to be a conference here in Chicago on May 30th and 31st, hosted by a gentleman who was here about a year ago by the name of John Kuntz, who runs the Thorium National Energy Alliance and has a real viable alternative for large-scale mass power generation that could satisfy all of your clean power that you environmentalists want so bad. I mean, personally, I would rather have a small nuclear reactor that could burn up the waste at about the size of this restaurant powering the city of Chicago than about five coal trains per week coming into a large coal plant. But that's a story for another day. The one thing I want to get to in, in, involved in all of you is this. Capitalism is not an evil thing. It is, what's due, it is what has brought our society and our standard of living higher and higher. And its methodology of innovation to creation and product 
bringing out this best example by what has been happening in Silicon Valley in the last 30 years with the dimension of the internet, smartphones, and everything else. And it's that same model of stock options, of, of the corporate structure, of all this that has made our modern world possible. Oh Char my. Charlie, you know, you might think about it, but it was that very same structure that brought the railroads to the United States. The credit mobilier may have been corrupt, but they did get the credit out to the to the cup to the from they did get the credit out to build the railroads in the first place. So for me to sit here and believe that oh it's all the capitalists' fault and it's all a, a, a big thing. What I'm really worried worried about is collectivism. What I'm really worried about is more socialism. Friedrich von Hayek wrote in his book The Road to Serfdom that central planning on a government scale does not work because it ignores something very basic called the laws of supply and demand. When people want a product, companies make it. When people don't want a product, the company goes bankrupt. And that, my friends, you are already voting with your dollar. And that is why I am a big supporter of capitalism, of the free market enterprise system, and of the rights of private property. Or if you don't agree with me, look at Hernando de Soto and a book called The Mystery of Capital from Peru from the Institute of Liberty and Democracy. Thank you very much. Look, look at City City Corps. Did they go bankrupt? My name is Bim uh, uh, First, I'd like to uh, apologize uh, earlier. I should uh, really keep my words uh, at this time uh, instead of uh, just uh, say the, uh, my understanding about the Naperville smart meter thing. It uh, it's, shouldn't be a, a question period uh, discussion. Uh, in general, uh, today's talk. Uh, thank you for the for for bringing this up, and uh, I didn't know this agenda 21 before, so. Uh, I still don't know. I think I need to uh, look up uh, more information. Uh, so, but I I get the sense that there are there are strong uh, uh, feeling against uh, the government, uh, all level of government, from the UN, from the US government, from the local government, even from from the uh, association condos associations. Uh, so, uh, lots of uh, distrust there, uh, but uh, I think uh, in this country at least uh, it's uh, still a uh, very good uh, system <coughs> because I did, I myself uh, did experience uh, in Naperville where uh, there is a, a development uh, project uh, which uh, because of the neighborhood the complaint, and uh, then I was also joined that, and uh, after quite a few sessions of council meeting, and uh, the project was finally defeated. So I think uh, if you have a good reason, just say that, and uh, communicate uh, with other people, and uh, you will get support. So I hope uh, uh, all the, issues you're talking about today is like uh, uh, seems to have a, a good title environmentalist or, or global some uh, advancement or uh, it seems the title are very good but uh, you are point out uh, the, the underneath uh, it's a very bad things happening uh, to me I still don't get these two things connected uh, I would like to see the good title, that's what I, I'm for, it. like the environmental concern. If there's an environmental concern, we should all get concerned. Uh, what's wrong with that? And uh, if there are some negative impact, let's talk about the negative impact. There are some other positive impact we should uh, keep. So uh, I don't like just, uh, oh, this uh, uh, UN Agenda is, uh, 21 is uh, good in, in the, on the title, but bad in the material. Uh, so I think some part is probably good, some part may be bad, and I, I would like to understand more. And uh, also, the Google Earth, I think uh, if you understand more, uh, Google will listen to you. 
like uh, all the, I think uh, Google now has uh, remove all the faces or blur the, all the faces in their pictures. So there's no people can be recognized. Uh, I think that's also because they heard enough complaint and then that's what they did. But I think at the same time I saw uh, a news in, in Soviet. Uh, they had a similar system and uh, they didn't blur, blur the face and that created uh, lots of some problems. Uh, last issue is uh, about oil sands, uh, the, the pipeline from Canada to Houston. Uh, I was a geologist uh, for 10 years uh, in the oil sands area. Uh, I did know oil sands is a dirty energy. Okay, how dirty? Uh, it's pretty dirty. It's uh, they started developed oil sands in 1960s and they, they said, oh, the, the tailing ponds, the, the water, residual water is so bad, cannot let it flow into the regular river and there's no way to treat that, it was too costly. But they said, okay, let's just uh, have a big tailing pond and then maybe after 10, 20 years, uh, technology advances and the problem will be solved. Uh, unfortunately, now it's uh, 50 years later, it's still not soft. The tailing ponds just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, but it's a, a lot of energy. Okay, I'm not uh, object to, to, to stop that uh, commercially, but uh, uh, there are some plus and minuses. Okay, thank you. I too have remarks to make. Uh, back in the, in the oh, about uh, the time of the, uh, the second century of the Common Era, uh, the Book of Revelation was written in a letter uh, to the seven churches of Asia being Asia Minor. Uh, and it was to the churches because those people were living in a time of persecution of the Christians. Uh, there were other people who were persecuted too, but other Christians were being persecuted. Uh, one of the problems of uh, living in the uh, Greco-Roman cities was that if you were in trade, you had to belong to a, a, a trade association, and the trade associations uh, were uh, very patriotic. Uh, they would make uh, uh, sacrifices uh, to the Roman emperor uh, as a god, uh, and uh, they would do other things. Uh, uh, to acknowledge that they were good Roman citizens, <coughs> which meant uh, that uh, they would hail Caesar as a god and uh, uh, their lord. <laughs> the uh, Christians uh, knew uh, who their lord was, uh, their lord Jesus, uh, Jesus the Christ, the, the son of God, who was God, and uh, so they saw this as blasphemy, and they would have to refuse this, and they would not have the mark of uh, being a member of the trade association, they would lose their business. Uh, they might even be persecuted and killed. Uh, it, it was a little discouraging for those folks uh, and uh, they, they needed what encouragement to the uh, writer of the book of Revelation with his uh, pictorial uh, uh, sort of uh, cartoon character of, uh, of Satan and uh, angels and uh, the stars of heaven and so on uh, could get them. <laughs>
and, and uh, they treasured uh, that writing. And it is part of our New Testament. Okay. Uh, when, what our speaker tonight has talked about has been that there is a, a lot of pressure on uh, people to conform uh, to a, uh, an agenda that uh, is being spelled out and that, that agenda is broadly uh, one that has some very uh, negative aspects. Uh, one, uh, one should consider the negative aspects and uh, figure uh, how one uh, resists it. Okay. Yes, you're next. Good evening. I'm Mark Weiermuller. This is my first time at the College of Complex. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I've enjoyed myself so far. I love the one fool at a time speaking. So, and I like the interruptions, especially when people say, get to the question. I've been to a lot of things the last year. I've been to a lot of seminars. One, one of the rules a lot of people say is limit your question to 18 words. I've actually asked a lot of questions at events. I asked Governor Quinn an 18-word question. He gave me a four-minute answer. Actually, he didn't answer my question. I was talking about pensions, and he didn't answer my question. And I've asked that question a lot of people. I've asked Bill Daly this question. I've asked John Cullerton a question. I've asked Mitt Romney the question, uh, different questions. And often, I don't get the answer, which is, I like the rebuttal. I usually am fairly polite, and I don't try to force my rebuttal in there. So a couple comments about tonight. I like the speaker. Diane is great. I would say her thing is, people are kind of touching on details, but her theme is, is this is kind of creepy. That's, it's nefarious. This is something going on. You can say, well, she was wrong on this detail, therefore I'm going to discount everything. That's not what I'm getting out of it. It's more like, you know, watch it. Be suspicious. One of the things uh, President Barack Obama has said is he wants a lot of transparency. And it's one of the things I agree with him on, except he hasn't done it. So uh, a couple comments. I like Michael Foley back here. This guy has a lot of passion. I want to have him out. He'd be great at a dinner party. <laughs> uh, the gentleman reading here, he was very good because he spoke short, very short. I like David Travis. Very good comments. And I can't remember your name, but you're... David Zucker. I like, especially I like you shutting the people down without the questions. <laughs> Pat Butler, you're very good too. I like you. A couple quick comments. I like to stay under two minutes. I go to a lot of meetings. I go to school board meetings, village meetings. I always talk. You know, I like to hear myself talk. I like to question authority. I like to, you know, especially if it's on cable TV or something. Maybe, maybe somebody's listening. So, a couple comments. I, I, I do support limited government. I do have questions about the vaccines. Excuse the nurse. She's sleeping over here now, but maybe I'll wake her up. Uh, for example, this year with the flu vaccine, they said it just didn't work, and they told everybody they had to get it. I don't know. I mean, who decides that everybody has to do it? And it's, uh, I have no medical training, and that's probably why I know more about it than most people, because I don't have anything, any agenda. I don't want people to go to the hospital to get the vaccine because I'm not making money on it, so I'm more objective on that particular issue. I do know people that have, uh, I have three kids, and I, I've met many families, and I have met people that have questioned the vaccines, especially when a child's ill, and it's the week before school starts, and they say, you got to get this vaccine today, today, today. So uh, smart meters, I question anything that says smart. Anytime they say it's smart, it's often very dumb. Uh, that's about it. I just, my general feeling is I want the free market. And that's the theme I want to go with, capitalism, free market. And final thought. Final thought, are you ready? Yeah. I do love the one fool at a time. This is a great concept. So this fool is done speaking, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the college. All right, well, it sounds like he had a good time. So good. Thank you again, it was really very good. Let's thank our speaker. 
All right, I'll be eclectic as usual here. Uh, think locally, act globally. That's the motto of the U.S. Green Party, not the United Nations. Uh, if you don't like the United Nations, I guess you like multinational corporations that go in and take over third world countries. And what they do when they take over third world countries, I lived for about 10 years in the state of West Virginia. And I saw what free market capitalism did to the Appalachian Mountains. I like take the Appalachian Trail. And I saw what free market capitalism done to that beautiful location. And they're continuing to go in there with the mining industry did, turning those things into a beautiful landscape into something that resembled the moon. If that's where you think we should head, then I've got the question if you're really thinking seriously about this. Now I'm going to jump to, you say there's a right of people to have an auto. And I'm not actually anti-auto, but I go, well, what about the right of the people to have a bike? And you left out one other group, which I'm in, and that's the rights of the pedestrian. And I would say, I, I, you want to advocate streets, I want to advocate 24-hour bus service to all communities in, in metropolitan areas. Now, I think that's a much more positive goal. Uh, there's about 500,000 people that use fixed public transit every day, going from to and from work and engaging, such as I did, in leisure time activities. So if there's a conflict of rights, I'm going to have to focus on the rights of the pedestrian, the scant resources. And if you think that we should have additional, now the other thing, you seem to have an anti-environmental agenda. If you ever breathe the stuff that comes out of an automobile, uh, and this stuff goes up into the air, the atmosphere, and it's our atmosphere. And you can't continue to pollute it without some damaging effect. It, there's no purification process that's going in. And it's, if you think multinational corporations could continue to pour chemicals into into their local areas, yeah, that something comes, turns up, and it affects something called the ocean. The lake, the lakes, and then the rivers, and then the ocean. And we're talking about our ocean that you're polluting. If you think there should be the ocean be destroyed, then perhaps we should not bother with the United Nations and go with the multinational corporations. Now, the other thing about the United Nations, Tim hit on this, is that it's inconceivable. Isolationist arguments are always more positive. It's always simple to say, well, I'm not going to do anything. I'm be all by myself. However, the world is, in fact, anybody knows that communication, transportation, and commerce is all expanding. We cannot stop that. Now, we can pretend it's not happening. You can't pretend, we pretend we're not commuting. Look at what look at what you're wearing. Where did you get those garments? It came from where? Around the world? China. Who knows what country it came from? Commerce and transportation is making the world this global perspective. We've got to embrace it. To say that we're not going to is just, I don't know where you're headed. Now, the other thing, you don't like condos. Well, I'm fixing up a house with my sister, and I don't have a condo board. But I'll tell you, I had to pay the guys who were working on the place the other day, and it cost me about 10,000 <laughs> bucks. Now, I don't have a lousy condo board I have to deal with, but it's a trade-off. And a very expensive one for me, believe you me. But yes, you can do it individually, or you can do it collectively. That's your choice. Uh, but there's a price attendant to it. Uh, regarding polio vaccine, I'm going to speak uh, on the American Revolution, actually. And I was thinking about this first thing that George Washington did when he showed up at Valley Forge to put together the colonial army was that he said everybody in this army is going to be vaccinated against smallpox. Because he knew that the greatest threat to the army was not the British army, but disease. It was also the disease to the communities that they traveled to. People didn't want armies coming along because they brought disease. 
I will on a note say this though, of all the thousands or so speakers I've scheduled, one we had, the woman from Oak Park that spoke about it, vaccinations was the one I truly, I wear free speech form, I honestly regret ever having called and contacted her. Just total nonsense. On Wednesday, I was at a United Nations uh, program which announced that polio had been eradicated from the world. This is what the vaccinations have achieved. If you want the alternative, could be my guest. Uh, what the heck are you beating up on NGOs? These are people that show up like physicians without borders, Red Cross, there's disaster relief, like, you know, the Tusamis, what the heck, are, what are those, bad? I don't see what's wrong with them. Uh, I don't know, what, also, what's wrong with Woodrow Wilson? He's got a government center, part of the federal triangle, by the way, and here's a guy who actually, if we had listened to him, we could have precluded something from happening called World War II. But no one listened to him. And they're despairing, putting him down for this. He tried to stop World War II. Um, he was a statesman, and a far-reaching one, an academic as president. Uh, oh, this thing, centralized planning doesn't work. I suppose dispersed capitalism works. Tim, how many businesses go under? Uh, that quite fail, a, quite a few. To merge or bankruptcies. This is an effective, foolproof operation, right? Free market. Yes, yes it is. Now that it ever goes wrong. Because, because now that happens, it's just point A to point B to get out of here. Get away with this. Uh, no, it's 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 it doesn't function. If anything, you want to get data. How many businesses fail? I mean, how many businesses failed today in the city of Chicago? Quite a few. I was watching that show, a restaurant show, about restaurants closing. I mean, oh yeah, country party capitalism works. What's wrong with centralized planning? How do you think we have ecology complexes every week? And last of all, I don't know what in the world. I am a graduate of the Dewey School of Library Science of Columbia University. And I am singularly amazed that Mr. Dewey, who is nothing more than a librarian, such as myself, with such nefarious character. <laughs> but I did happen to catch that. <coughs> Anyhow, we certainly enjoyed it. Come again when you got another one, India. Good to see some new faces here. Thank you. Speaker gets, okay. uh, speaker gets the last word if there's no rebuttals. Yeah. Speaker gets the last word if there's no rebuttals. Okay, I can't really see how there was, like, we all went off on a different tangent. <laughs> all I cared about was bringing to light United Nations Agenda 21. Many people have not heard of it. They're not familiar with communitarianism. They don't understand the theoretical underpinnings of what's going on with the green you can agenda. Tell us what it is either. Hey, hey, hey one boo at a time. <laughs> You can look it up. I gave you the resources to look it up. It was signed on to in 1992 by George Herbert Walker Bush. It was enacted in 1993 by executive order by Bill Clinton. In 2011, Barack Obama signed us on to the White House Rural Councils. United Nations Agenda 21 is the long-term goal of the United Nations to <laughs> impoverish the West, to put us into city centers where we only have access to public transportation and high-rise living over retail structures to take us off of our land. Look it up. I'm glad you find it humorous. It's there and it's real. And if you don't believe, go look it up for yourself. I'm only here to enlighten people as to what it is. What the green agenda really is, is not the green agenda. Smartphones, sustainable, be aware. Your government is trying to basically work in cahoots with the United Nations to take away our rights as individuals. Communitarianism is communism. Some of you think communism is the greatest thing on earth. It terrifies me. My family left Russia to escape communism. And yet, more and more and more, our government is under this guise of think globally, act locally, to make us think that we're doing the right thing when in fact we're being deluded. I want you to do the research. I want you to doubt me. I want you to get as active and looking at things as I did, how I learned about Charlotte Isserbeck, how I learned about so many different things. I retired three years ago, three and a half years ago. 
I'm passionate about this idea. I'm a strong believer in the individual. And the individual has to stand individually, maybe with like-minded others, but to not be herded along, to go along, to get along, just because they're told. We have a government that is more and more and more encroaching on us, whether it's the smart meters in our houses, or the iPasses, or our iPhones, or anything like that. We have become accustomed to giving up our privacy. It all started a century ago with the progressive movement. Woodrow Wilson, look him up, evil man, got us into World War I. Dewey, look where he studied and learned his theories. It's all about operant conditioning. Computers, operant conditioning. It's not, do you agree, do you disagree? These are facts, go look them up. Go look up Executive Order 12852, signed by William Jefferson Clinton in 1993, that got the President's Council on Sustainable Development going. We're being lied to, we're being deluded, we're being misled. And please, folks, don't believe anything I say. I want you to go. I want you to look this stuff up as well. Because you know what? It sounds like so much insanity. It really, it, it sounds, if I were to say to say, like I said, if, when I was doing this research, I thought, no, this can't be real, this can't be real. Well, you know what it is. And we're beating a dead horse around here, whether it's about vaccines, use your own judgment. Whatever you choose to do, it's your own judgment. But knowledge is power. If you want a vaccine, get one. If you don't want a vaccine, don't get one. But when you're being forced to do something over your own objections, your own common sense, if you're not sure, question authority, folks. Agenda 21 is real. I want to thank you for inviting me out. Look it up. Look it up. 1992. Earth Summit, Rio de Janeiro, and go look up Habitat One, go look up Maurice Strong, look up all of these things. And by the way, an excellent book in closing on the, the case for the Canada oil sands. Canada has been subsidizing its own oil for the last 40 years, and they're doing phenomenally. And if we don't take the Keystone XL pipeline, they're gonna ship that gasoline to China. And Ezra Levant wrote a wonderful book on the subject, the case for the oil sands. Use your own judgment. Read both sides of an issue. Don't just listen to one side. Keep your mind open to both sides. And always, always question authority. Thank you. Now, we don't have to read nothing because we was here in 2008. The biggest motherfucking banks in the country failed. And they said, if you don't give me some money, then you're going to be in trouble. And we gave them some money. So don't tell me nothing about it. That's this is all what you he said that's why we're such a brilliant society is our failures that we have such a high rate. He's the one he wrote the black swan. Uh -huh. <laughs> but anyway, he, he said that, that that it was our high rate of failure that really made us a successful ability. But uh, Canada said Canada said that they weren't gonna have the United States as an exclusive customer. They were gonna they weren't gonna put all their eggs in one basket. They want to have just one customer. We'll have some of the oil, but some of it will go to Canada. Yep. Yeah.